Hi guys and welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to continue with part two of our five part video series on how to plan your kitchen remodel and today's topic is going to be how to plan your kitchen footprint. Now last week we talked about how to plan and come up with your budget so planning your footprint is going to be really important and kind of goes hand in hand with that. And there is a big secret that kitchen designers and architects use in the design world to plan a good functioning kitchen uh, kitchen footprint so it doesn't just look nice but it also performs for you and your family so make sure to stick around to the very end so you will learn what is that big secret that we use in our industry but also to stick around and then to find out where you can get your free download for a kitchen planner blueprint so you can start remodeling your kitchen today hi everybody my name is kirsten i am the lead kitchen designer at king's kitchen we are your local go-to team for kitchen design and remodeling in tacoma washington Now before we get started guys, do me a favor, hit the like button for this video if you're excited to learn how to plan for your kitchen remodel correctly, plan your footprint today, and how to avoid costly mistakes doing that. So last week we talked about budget and when you work on your footprint, the budget and the footprint really go hand in hand because when you make big changes in your footprint it will drive up your budget for example if you're moving your range or you're moving your refrigerator now you have to add additional electrical and plumbing work to your budget um, so there's a lot of things you have to consider when you work on your footprint and it always is unique to your situation you know is it a new construction are you working with an existing footprint and need to change it it's a remodel um, so all those things really um, go hand in hand with your budget. Now also, uh, another big one when changing your footprint is uh, thanks to HGTV, everybody feels like we have to move walls. Now you don't always have to remove a wall, uh, but if, you, you know, if you're if you thinking of it in your situation, you really you think it'd be great to open up the space, you do want to remove that wall. Now get ready to hire a structural engineer because if you want a contractor to remove your wall and they want to keep their license, to get the permit you will have to have a structural engineer come out, draft up the plans um, that you will need for your contractor with the calculations of the new beam and also to submit with your permitting packet. So for a standard wall removal, I suggest adding about five to seven thousand dollars to your overall budget and of course it greatly depends on where you live in the United States. Um, but yeah, that is part of thinking of your footprint planning that also go hand in hand with your budget. Now let's do an example. Let's say you are living in a house um, that's actually a dear friend of mine is in this situation right now. She's remodeling. She has a slide-in range in her island that she doesn't like. She doesn't really like having it in the island. She thinks it's nicer as a centerpiece on, on the wall, but also the downdraft isn't really that exciting to her. It, those are usually not that strong unless you really invest into a very expensive model. Um, so what can you do? Well, the, the first thing is to, well, you could still leave the, the slide and range in the island. You could just add a, a ceiling mounted vent hood. Uh, okay, but what if you have a second floor? What if you have a second floor and now you can't directly vent out of the ceiling, out of the roof? Well, you would have to change your footprint and move that range against the wall and preferably against an exterior wall so you could vent right out to the exterior so um, that's just an example of, on why you would maybe change your footprint and then um, there really is a lot of things that go, that go hand in hand with it that you have to think about does is this going to work 
There is a secret that kitchen designers and architects use to confirm the kitchen footprint will be successful and functional, and that is called the kitchen triangle. And you may have heard of it, you may did a little research and uh, found information on it, and there are a few really important principles that make the kitchen triangle, and I'm gonna go over them with you, but first, you know, um, really interesting, the kitchen, like improving kitchen footprints, um, actually the whole idea of it and, and, and improving it started back in 1920, in the 20s, uh, by a good lady, and I have to read her name, uh, called Lillian Moeller Gilbreth. She was an industrial psychologist and engineer, and she used motion savings in the kitchen during, for preparation as the guiding principle to create and work on the first drafts of the kitchen triangle. I thought that was pretty cool. So um, let's dive into the scoop. How can you make the kitchen triangle work? And there are a few principles to make it work. And I'm going to call them principles and not rules because you know, you can't really always apply all of the principles in your kitchen. Um, so just keep that in mind. You, you know, maybe the structure of your house is not going to allow for every single thing to apply. Don't worry, it's still going to be functional even if you don't hit every single one of these principles, okay? Now, along with those uh, principles of the kitchen triangle, there are a couple really, really good guidelines. And some of them come from the, the NKBA, the National Kitchen and uh, Bath Association. And I like to use those guidelines. Here are my favorite ones when planning a kitchen uh, footprint. Number one, a sink should have at least 24 inches of landing space on one side and another 18 inches on the other side. Number two, that I think sometimes people really don't think about, is that a refrigerator should have at least 15 inches of landing space on one side, preferably the handle side, or if you don't have no landing space left and right, it should be the same amount of landing space, 15 inches at least, within 48 inches across on a countertop. Okay, so you, you know, just imagine you're grabbing things out of the refrigerator, you really need that for a well-functioning kitchen. When you're working in a kitchen and you have one cook, your aisles should be 42 inches. That makes it for a, a lot of great room to really work in there. And if you have two cooks in the kitchen, you wanna expand that to 48 inches of walkway. So, um, of course, please remember these are guidelines and principles, and you're not always going to hit every one of them. And there are a lot more, actually. Um, but you're not always going to hit them in every one of the kitchens that you might be designing or planning. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now guys, I know that was a lot of information, so no worries, we already took the notes for you. Head on below to the description and you will see all the notes, but also a link to our website as we post all of our YouTube videos in blog format with details on our website. Um, and then don't forget to like this video, comment on the video if you have any questions. I'd love to answer all of your questions about this topic. I mean, I can talk kitchens all day long, and my husband gets tired of me talking it at home all the time, so guys, post your, your questions and I'll answer them for you. Uh, I hope this helped everybody when you're planning your kitchen remodel, but don't forget, if you're local, if you're in Tacoma, Washington, head on over to King's Kitchen and we are your local pro to help you with this. We'll love to design your kitchen and then handle the remodel for you, or just show you really cool samples. I mean, you know, grab a coffee, come on over to our showroom and check out what we have. And other than that, stay tuned as we will have the other videos of this five-part video series up for you to watch um, on how to plan your kitchen remodel. Thanks, guys. Bye.